Dear colleagues, I'm going to speak about one of very important issues in nephrology because one of the major decision making in clinical nephrology is to do kidney biopsy. Today, I'm going to discuss safety bears. Uh, so uh, this month, we have uh, two important publications added to the literature. Uh, one of them uh, under this title, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Native Kidney Biopsy Complications. I like it very much because it reflects the recent updated data for more than 118,000 biopsies. Very important. So this is how the study was conducted. So it is systematic review and meta-analysis of literature. Publications included in this uh, meta-analysis uh, between January 83 up to March 2018. Uh, 100, one, more than 1,000 manuscripts in the initial PubMed search. And at the end, the uh, study included 87 manuscripts in final analysis. So complication rate of native kidney biopsies performed using automated devices under kidney imaging, uh, what, more than 118,000 events, biopsies. Then the age is between 30 to 79, 45% of uh, the patients are female. And this is the complications. Please memorize this percentage because this is the current percentage of complication. 11% 11, 11 hematoma, 4.3% pain at biopsy site, 3.5% macroscopic hematuria, 1.6% bleeding requiring transfusion, 0.3% bleeding requiring intervention, and 1% in 1,600 uh, death mortality. So mortality is 0.06%. I think whenever uh, we would like to have a consent from the patient for biopsy, this is the data that is fresh from this data registry for more than 118,000 biopsies. Complication rates were higher in hospitalized patients, so th this is to put in mind, and patients with acute kidney injury. And the conclusion is, uh, although, and this is the conclusion, although the native kidney biopsy is an invasive diagnostic procedure, the rates of bleeding complications are low, a bit rare. This can occur post biopsy. Complications are more frequent seen after hospitalization and acute kidney injury. So this is the first point. Don't forget 11% hematoma, 1.6% bleeding uh, uh, requiring transfusion, 4.3% being at the biopsy site, 0.3% bleeding require intervention, 3.5% macroscopic hematuria, mortality 6 per 10,000. So this is the, the, uh, the important first article. The second article from French, cohort, nationwide cohort study. And this, is, ad, this article addresses major bleeding and the risk of death after percutaneous native kidney biopsies. And this is the French data between uh, two, 2010 to 2018, percutaneous kidney biopsy, uh, 52,000 uh, kidney biopsies, large number of patients. And this is the beauty of that registry. Uh, major bleeding occurs in 5%. This number, uh, 2,765 over the total number, 5% of patients had major bleeding. Blood transfusion, because this is a major bleeding, this is blood transfusion in all of this 5%. And geographic intervention of 0.3%, 6%. Nephrectomy in 0.07%. So this is to put in mind. And major bleeding, and this is one of the most important points in this study, major bleeding was an independent risk factor for death. Odds ratio of death, approximate twofold uh, increase of uh, mortality. The most important single information in this uh, uh, article is the major bleeding risk score. 
uh, and the score is ranges from zero up to 41. And not 41, the risk of bleeding, but the total summation of the score. So this is the score and the points for each point in the score. So we have comorbidity index, uh, and this is the scoring of comorbidity and the points of the score. Frailty index, and this is how frailty index, and this is the score point for H. Six men minus one, dyslipidemia minus one. Obesity here in the score is minus one because there are many interrelated uh, factors, although obesity is important whenever we think of bleeding. Anemia eight, so anemia is important risk for bleeding. Thrombocytopenia is two. Cancer within preceding years, two. Abnormal kidney function, two. Acute kidney injury, four. And you can go to the score, autoimmune diseases, two. Diabetes is negative, autoimmune is two. Vasculitis, five. Hematologically related kidney uh, disease, two. So uh, thrombotic myocarditis four. And we take the total score. Uh, don't forget uh, these factors. Anemia, thrombocytopenia, frailty index, cancer, uh, comorbidity index, obesity. Although obesity here in this score is negative, but because it, it may interact with other risk factors, but by multivariate analysis, obesity is bad. Let us go to the bleeding risk according to the points of the score. If the total summation of the score items between one to four, bleeding risk is 0.4%. Five to nine, 1%. 10 to 14, 2%. 15 to 19, 5%. 20 to 24, 12%, 25 to 29, 17%, 30 to 34, 23%, above or equal 35, uh, one third of the patient will bleed. So to put this in mind, to follow the checklist, I think it's important. And in conclusion of this French cohort, the risk of bleeding following hepatitis native kidney biopsy is not negligible and is associated with a twofold high risk of death. It varies widely according to patient characteristics. And this is the editorial comment, how safe is a native kidney biopsy? We can say it is safe, provided that we are cautious and we should weigh the risk of the benefit and to calculate the checklist to know the risk of complications, especially bleeding. Uh, this is the last uh, uh, slide about one idea of out of the box idea. Uh, and because this article addresses a safety and effectiveness of transjugular renal biopsy, all of us are aware by transjugular hepatic biopsy, the same rationale. If bleeding occurs, it occurs within the vascular system, no, no uh, blood loss. So it's transjugular renal biopsy for systemic lupus erythematosus and antiphospholipid antibody syndrome patients taking and thrombotic, very exciting. So the, we have transcutaneous renal biopsy as a control, 54 cases, and transjugular renal biopsy in 256 cases in this uh, study. 69 transjugular while the patient is an aspirin, 68 while the patient is treated with anticoagulant, and 119 uh, while uh, the patient is untreated with either aspirin or anticoagulant. A very nice. Just to show you how the transjugular kidney biopsy is taken. So the castor is introduced and then there is a sheath with the guide wire. The castor is introduced until it reaches the vein, vena cava, inferior vena cava, then the renal vein to reach its final destination, the kidney, and the biopsy is taken. To uh, reach this side, there is uh, amount of contrast to be injected to see what we are going on. And this is, I think this is a problem when we have renal failure to inject a few uh, cc of contrast uh, that is uh, necessary in this maneuver. This study shows transjugular renal biopsy obtained from SLA and antifosolate patients taking antithrombotic had diagnostic yields and safety profile like transcutaneous renal biopsy who are untreated by antithrombotic drugs. Thus, Transjugular biopsy should be considered for SLA and antifosolate patients at risk of bleeding as an idea, out of the box idea, and alternative uh, for, for safe maneuver uh, for patients in risk of bleeding. But uh, transjugular renal biopsy needs 
facilities and needs expertise and uh, doing the maneuver. So it needs a special training. Uh, I, I like to end with this uh, point. The most important safety barrel is the wisdom. We should weigh the risk benefit of doing the biopsy. Biopsy is essential for decision making for the diagnosis and the management. Yes, we go ahead and provide that we follow the standard of care to reduce the complications and to apply the checklist. I, I, like, I like the checklist uh, to know where we are. Uh, I'd like to stop here. If you have any points, uh, please don't hesitate to comment on the video on the YouTube that will be uploaded um, uh, and you will find it. And please, uh, I'm waiting your feedback. Thank you and goodbye.